It is November 5th, 2016. And this podcast, we're going to talk about Hillary Clinton. And we're going to talk about things from a perspective that more than likely you have not heard before from anyone else. But of course, if you've been listening to this YouTube channel, you've heard about my warnings concerning World War III that go all the way back to 2008. And I have always seen in my mind's eye a period in which this country comes under siege, in which women are sold again. Now, I notice this is something that a lot of other people that talk about similar topics regarding martial law, regarding survival preparedness, regarding such topics. I notice it's not a topic that's commonly mentioned. I also notice that some things can be perceived as so frightening that there's a certain amount of anger that the listener has towards the person that's bringing them the information. And I've seen this in real life. I've seen people actually scream at me saying, you're trying to create World War III. By thinking about it, you can make it happen. And I think that there are certain New Age superstitions that are more like mind viruses than anything enlightening. I've been talking for years about the, uh, the decline of the sacred masculine and how it's being pushed out of our society, citing my own specific examples based on my way of life, based on the things that I am warning society about and how society has responded. Inner Hillary Clinton, the demonic white woman head of the New World Order in the United States. That was sarcasm. But that is a very powerful, noticeable meme alive on the planet today, alongside the meme that the establishment hates Trump. And what I've been saying most of this year is that the establishment owns both of these candidates. They are friends. They both have ties to Putin. Not just Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. They both have ties to Putin and many others, including Obama. I mean, this whole thing about the Obama-Putin stare down, WE style, is a joke. It is a joke. And notice how they, they took that picture at some sort of an economics forum or meeting about a full month ago. You know, the, the, the fear about World War III any time now. And I believe it's on the horizon. Of course, it's a stage managed third world war where the victor has already been determined. But that's not how the people are looking at it. That's not how it's being presented. How they want it presented is, oh my God, these two might actually go to blows. Obama and Putin are actually really, really pissed at each other. They're not actors. Oh no, this is real. And World War III literally could break out at any time. They use it as psychological warfare in the people of Russia, the people of the United States, the people of China, the people of the world. They use it as psychological warfare. And then a Putin associate comes out and says, there will be World War III if Clinton is elected. Of course, Trump's statements about, we might not need to shoot down those Russian jets. Takes a backseat. People don't want to touch it with a 10-foot pole. His talks about renegotiations with China, as good as that may sound, these are actually moves that can lead to full-on currency warfare. Then economic collapse, then a physical war that can lead to the actual physical occupation of the United States by Chinese and Russian forces. All of this and more, I believe, is the plan. And what you can count on, for those of you, that even want to go back in my YouTube channel and see what I was talking about four years ago. See what I was talking about six years ago. You're going to see a similar theme. So before these, uh, before these jackasses, these guild actor theaters walked onto the stage for the first time in their act before the, uh, the viewing public of the world, to the tune of billions of people, before they pretended to have an election, an election selection, a selection election, a Trump-Clinton, a Clinton-Trump election selection. Uh, all this has been pre-planned. You're dealing with cognitive impairment. If someone thinks that any contrarian thought 
is secretly and covertly a pro-Clinton thought. This is the depths of the sickness. Not to mention, in today's day and age, people will actually look at a headline of a YouTube video or an article. They won't read the article. They won't watch the video. They'll comment without realizing how dumb they are. They'll comment on the title. So, the title of a recent video, Americans predict their own riots after Clinton slash Trump 2016. And this woman's like, hell yeah, I'm ready to riot. Oh, really? Are you going to put that on YouTube? You're going to have your kids film? You're going to send that back home for Christmas? First of all, are you actually going to do that? Or is this more shit talking on YouTube? Yeah, like all the uh, counterfeit armchair intellectual counterfeit patriots supporting the Burns organ situation on Facebook, but not actually going up there themselves, but guilt tripping others that are seeing through the psyops that it was. We have people out there that have big, strong opinions in the comment section and on Facebook and on Reddit and in other places where you just, you know, comment with whatever anonymous handle that you want. How many people are actually speaking their own truth? How many people for years have talked about this plan to leave women in harm's danger, to put women in harm's danger, to, to socially engineer a society, to where the women don't even have protectors anymore, and to where they're socially conditioned to thinking that they don't need protectors anymore, and that their cell phone is a protector instead of the actual tracking device, that it can be used for foreign armies. Gee, I wonder why my cell phone won't work. Oh, oh, it's back on. Oh, the cell phones are back on now, after like all types of cataclysms you think someone's just going to throw away a five to six hundred i can't believe people are paying this much you think someone's just going to throw away a six hundred dollar iphone or a thousand dollar new phone or two they'll, they'll, they'll be more expensive phones before the shit hits the fan that'll be doing all types of things the current phones don't do because we're a few years off so what you're seeing now you know i'm sorry to tell you but it's my responsibility to share with you what I believe is the truth and not try to spin the truth into something that is popular and already well received. So when I see other people in the alternative media spinning and spinning and spinning on the spike of lies, gear upon gear upon gear upon gear upon gear to push the Trump, to hump the Trump forward to the next level, or shall I say the next step down in our descent into hell. Hillary Clinton is not someone I'm backing. And if anything, you could see how Hillary Clinton has sent voters to Donald Trump. And as I've said, Donald Trump has sent voters to Hillary Clinton. Why is that? They've already determined who was the next selection. And I believe it could be very well Trump to lead us into World War III, massive civil unrest in the United States. And when I see the media pushing out the opposite narrative... And you know the media can't be trusted, and you see how they've co-opted the alternative media. It's very possible they've done a bait-and-switch. and They've made it seem like, to so many, without discernment, that don't actually do their own research, that just listen to Alex Jones, that just listen to or just read the popular news wires. They're not seeing between the lines. They're not realizing, well, maybe the real elite has actually held back their support of Donald Trump because this whole thing about you know, the establishment being behind Clinton has been a lie, but they want to hold up that lie until after the election and then spring it. The real agenda. And so we have about 10,000 conspiracy theories as to where this could go. And I am open to the possibility that they could still put Clinton in power to create a, a disturbance and even further bring up the Trump the Messiah concept. So it could go either way with a selection. I've called in the direction of Trump, but in this podcast, I want to talk about why. Whether they choose to use Clinton 
as a selection in either this run or, say, in 2020. If it's anything like the Simpsons episode, Trump gets in first, then Clinton. Well, if you look at my actual timeline for World War III and occupation of the United States, it's actually around 2025, which is nine years from now. What kind of political things can we see in the next nine years? No, I don't watch The Simpsons for cues on what's going on in the world. Don't be ridiculous. The only reason I brought that up is because millions of people now know about this in Russia today just reported on it last week. It's amazing how many things I talk about that people think are weird, but then, of course, media outlets that they respect, large media outlets, they will also cover some of the same perspectives. So it's okay when the bigwigs do it, but when independent Alex Hansry with only so many thousands of viewers... When he does it, it's weird and it's crazy, man. It's crazy. But the truth is the truth. For whatever reason, in the Simpsons episodes, they have they've put in certain things and symbolism and of course 9-11 on the magazine. With this case, there's a an older episode, I believe, of The Simpsons. Although I saw somebody on Reddit go, that's 2015. That was after Donald through it that's actually not true the person just flat wrong cognitive impairment cognitive impairment an inability an unwillingness to do research no that that episode isn't 2015 that episode with trump going down the escalator came out in advance of the election by a certain amount of time it wasn't this year So it's because of the, uh, you know, the widespread acknowledgement of this episode and the other episodes in The Simpsons, you know, that have had things happen in the episode before they happened in real life. That actually puts this in a category of a plausible clue with regards to predictive programming in Hollywood, which is something that obviously, not the Arabs, as Alex Jones has said, but the real establishment has influence and control over. Now, when I saw Obama artificially rising like Trump out of the water, the Messiah for the left as Trump is the false Messiah for the right, false deceivers, servants of the archons, servants of the demiurge system, just different masks on the same monster, if you will. And then back in the day, they would actually show Trump or Obama taking off a mask and it having like Dick Cheney underneath. And you don't really see that type of awareness today. They've made it all about Clinton. Now, traditionally, when we look at election cycles, we see it go from Democrat to Republican, Democrat to Republican, back and forth, back and forth. We normally don't see a break in this. Now, of course, during a time of war or whatever, you might see a double election or a re-election, but the, the parties, for many years, traditionally have rotated, and the, uh, the public, the American public, for the most part, has long acknowledged the, uh, the two wings of the vulture, the, Repub the Republic Republicrats working together and maintaining the police state and maintaining Federal Reserve policies to where they are. And allowing the, the, the real debt to continue. You know, there's like what they tell the American public uh, on this president's dealt with the debt. By, by what? Creating more debt over here that's not really being acknowledged yet? By creating a bubble over here. We've seen Clinton do it. We've seen Bush do it. We've seen Obama do it. You know, they, they create more debt over there. And then their supporters will say, oh, no, they brought down the debt. You look at the whole situation. You realize what happened. <coughs> And then, of course, there's Obama with the National Monuments. And I think there's a deeper reason behind why that is taking place. Leverage on the national debt. But going back to when Obama was campaigning, he was the black messiah, the non-white guy. You know, something other than the establishment. He was literally coming out of the waters in the Oregonian, or Willamette Week, in Portland, Oregon. The front of their paper was literally... That's why I, I, I mentioned this analogy, you know, acting like someone's Jesus by them cutting out of the water because they've actually done that, you know, and, and even Bush, you know, pictures with a halo around their head. People actually respond 
subconsciously to Messiah's symbolism for whatever reason. It's, it's programmed into us to respond to Messiah's symbolism. I don't think it's something necessarily spiritual at all or even connected with Jesus. You know, the halo above the head. I mean, there's a lot of distortion, I think, that's, that's going on here. And humanity is being played. And not just white Americans or Americans in general. Humans across the planet, I wouldn't say spiritual beings, animals, whole different forms of life are being played. It's part of being alive. It's going through this test. <clears throat> but it is elementary, my Watson, uh, for you to see through the deception and this Clinton-Trump, this Trump conspiracy, this co-conspiracy between the two. Because when I saw that with Obama, it's like, oh my God, they're going to make it look like a black guy did this to amp up racial tensions in this country. And that's exactly what we've seen. But of course, people blame Obama and they're like, well, Obama, he is the sole root of this problem. And it's like, wait a minute, guys, four years ago, you guys were talking about all these other guys. It wasn't just Obama and Soros and Brzezinski. There was like a bunch of different names. And a lot of people, you know, the, the basic truth is a lot of conspiracy researchers, conspiracy theorists don't actually go into the research arena and research the power behind the throne. You know, they, they literally have adopted this McDonald's Kool-Aid cookie cutter conspiracy theory worldview that's very easy to actually debunk. They've, they've adopted the aspect of conspiracy theory that's easy to debunk and they've become the stereotype. The stereotype, the stereotype rape, rape, racist in some cases. I was almost going to say rapist, but here we see all these people uh, only calling Clinton the rapist and completely like looking the other way at, at other allegations concerning others. Oh no, they're lying, but they're not. They're not lying, but they are. Well, how do you know? Do you know them? No, I'm just, uh, do you have a crystal ball? Do you claim to have psychic abilities? Well, no, I'm just taking cues from the, they're taking cues from the freaking Google Newswire. They're taking cues from the Alex Jones show. So Alex Jones, Obama deception. We go back and re-review that. Was there some truth in that? Absolutely. I was a big promoter of the film. I was running around town handing it out when it came out. I even wore the damn Joker makeup. I told you. In the Alex Jones deception series, there's a lot of evidence of me supporting Alex Jones and interviewing Alex Jones and acting a fool back in the day during those contest years. So I'm actually old school for a young guy, which is unique. Being that there's a lot of older guys that are actually just getting involved in this stuff in the last few months and last few years. My involvement goes back as far as speaking and putting out my own content to the year 2004, 2005. And waking up to certain things when I was in my late teens through personal experience and then the world. You know, I saw the mind control then around Y2K, the predictive programming for the collapse before I even knew what freaking collapse was. I can't see a society was moving in this direction. Manufactured civil unrest. See what was happening in the year 2000. See the, later on, the, learn about the solar flare cycles and how they impacted me during that time. And then boom, 9-11. And then where were you? And what was actually going on with your life? Not on that day, but in those years, actually. Not the day of 9-11, but the late 90s, going to the 2000s, a time of great change, and they used 9-11 to, to send us in a dark direction. Then, like now, it's a powerful period of energy. We're also coming to completion on the solar cycle. And we are uh, soon to move into the minimum. And we've had some geomagnetic storms rumbling before the election. What a coincidence as they bring all this election, emotion, World War III fears, other fears and concerns, terrorists, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, again, these, these threats of terror attacks before the election, very popular in the news, people make their predictions, false flag, major October event, major, and people just get in the habit of this knee-jerk reaction, it's going to happen just next month, and Hillary Clinton is the devil, Trump is God. 
And it's like this short-sighted, actual conspiracy theory way of thinking that's easy to debunk, that actually in some cases can come across as extremist, as backwater, as no, 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 because the intellectualism of Trump is good, Hillary Clinton is bad, and they're not actually working together. Don't look at those pictures. The intellectualism of that is literally when you have people talking about 9-11 inside job false flag tear things like that then they switch those people aren't they're playing you okay they're they're trying to direct society into that frame of mind, but they're not in that frame of mind. Alex Jones knows that he is doing wrong. There are others where it I don't know them enough, well enough, as say I do Alex Jones. Having studied him for over a decade and talked to him briefly in a few interviews. About three different times I met him through a lot of actual study, knowing the old Alex Jones versus the new Alex Jones, I can determine that. Others, where I haven't, I don't have a full 10 years of digital video of them to analyze. Others, it's hard to tell if they know what they're doing is wrong. Or if they themselves, even if they sound intelligent, are under some kind of a spell. And I think that a lot of people have have overlooked the possibility of uh, spell casting where someone could be very intelligent very capable a good worker and there could be under some sort of a spell regarding Donald Trump so that everything they do everything that they say even though their past work shows they know better they could still be a very good soul I'm not here to attack old Trump supporters. There could be people out there supporting the guy that have good souls, that are doing good work. And for whatever reason, despite their capabilities, despite all the good that they have done and may continue to do in the future, they may be doing good. They may be someone who is charitable and loving. And yet they're supporting Donald Trump. We as humans can fall under these spells, and so it's not an insult to anyone that may be under a spell. Then there's shades of gray, so there could be a partial spell, just like there's a, a cloud, for example. You know, say somebody takes a draw off a cigarette or, a, or a, some marijuana. You know, the more they're drawing in, the more smoke's going to come out. So it's like with a spell, how thick are these clouds of spells that are cast in these directions? And there could be uh, you know, certain lifestyle behaviors, certain uh, rigid ways of thinking that can allow that spell to take hold because of how they're vibrating, because of where they're at, where their spirit is at, their mind, body, and spirit. There could be certain things present that allow a spell to take place. And if they want a certain spell to take place, or if they want a certain spell to be real, that Donald Trump is legit, then they could be giving that spell their own power without realizing that they should be shaking off the spell and seeing reality as it is. So I said a lot of important things there, but one of the most important things that I'm going to mention before I conclude this podcast is, is in regards to Hillary Clinton. So for a lot of people, they made it seem like a black guy did it. The black guy, the, the Muslim Barack Obama, not the puppet of the New World Order Barack Obama that some of us have been talking about all this time. Oh, no, no. The rogue black guy acting on his own with Black Lives Matter, who's a Muslim, who wants to kill the white people and make the world brown. Yeah, that fake conspiracy to ramp up racial tensions and divide and conquer. 
And it's not divide and conquer 101. This shit is advanced that we're moving into. They may have played these tactics before, but it also comes across as very advanced with their use of technology and Facebook and the manipulation of your Facebook feed to where it's manipulated where you're angrier now, but yet people have confused it for being awake, but they're angrier than ever and they're seething, they're seething. And that draws certain entities to those humans that like to be in a seething. Rape her in prison. Yeah, Hillary in prison. Yeah! When I look at Hillary, look, you guys can go ahead and call her demonic all you want. I see a white woman who originates from the continent of Europe. Okay, I don't see something that is so different than the other candidates. I've seen something evil in Shertoff. I see something evil in Obama when he smiles, when he stabs us in the back. I've said this since 2008. People thought I was weird and almost schizophrenic for saying that. What do you mean, Alex? The guy is genuinely not Bush. Anybody but Bush, Alex. Anybody but Bush. I mean, seriously. And we're years past Bush, folks. This was never about Bush. Bush wasn't a monkey. He was an actual servant puppet of the New World Order. Just like Barack Obama. Just like Donald Trump. Just like Hillary Clinton. And none of these characters is is grotesquely more evil or nicer than the other. They're all actually serving the same system. This perspective is so outside the box of the consensus reality of the alternative media. It still is the truth. So Hillary Clinton, who's not yet been the president yet, I mean, regardless of Clinton, bill that is she has not she's been secretary of state are we seeing the same hateful vile behavior towards other secretaries of states that are also guilty of wrongdoing no so when the left gets defensive and say you know this this is coming across as misogynist there's a little bit of truth in that when they were saying a couple years ago well, you guys don't like obama because you're racist no that didn't describe me but did that describe some people that were uh, of course, pro-government, 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 pro-government. Now Obama's in. Oh, the government is fucked. That absolutely did happen. Don't even act like that didn't happen. And that's always been an issue for the alternative media. That's been falsely marginalized as being racist. That, you know, conspiracy research and people looking at the New World Order are inherently racist because there's aspects of the KKK and the Nazis that recognize a New World Order that they're against. And they're defining it as a world order that is nice to immigrants. That is pro-white genocide. And then again, and they push out this propaganda to keep white people in a state of fear. Using Facebook's help to manipulate the news feeds. You're constantly seeing the fake news about a false Islamic invasion that is not happening in your community. But it's being told to you that it's happening in the community next to you. And then of course you might see a few mainstream articles referencing some mosque that may be pushing Sharia law. Who are these Muslims? Are these real people to begin with? Or all these manufactured events manufactured and then reported on to freak you out and cause doubt. No faith in the universe, no faith in the creator, just fear of the dark skins or fear of the white man for that matter. Or a white woman. Ah, let's go back to Hillary. I look at a woman that could be related to my grandmother. Even though I'm olive skinned, you know, if you could put a lineup of my dad's side of the family, my mother's side of the family, you know, one from Afghanistan, that would be the father. And of course, the mother's side, the side I was raised with, grew up with, in the state of Oregon where I was born you know, Austrian genetics. And then, of course, you have the Lewis line on my grandmother's side and its connection to uh, uh, Welch. The Welch connection and the Lewis line. And I guess that that does trace to a, uh, a king about a thousand years ago. So when I look at... <coughs> 
my mother's side of the family, I see blue blood attributes, which is very common, Anglo-Saxon attributes. And knowing that their plan is, since I've been talking about since 2008, you may disagree with that. Uh, in my heart, I've been feeling this danger coming, and even cities like Portland being you know, some of the hardest hit. I want to be brief in this, though. But speaking to the new viewers, I've been warning about a uh, foreign occupation of the United States that the, uh, the New World Order will be in control of. Russia and China are not operating outside of that New World Order. And, and I've had a very real concern. It's almost like a knowing. It's almost like seeing something that's already happened, but I'm way back here on the timeline voicing it when it seems crazy. But the idea of a, a post-dollar collapse, post-invasion of the United States period where a lot of Americans have been demonized as, as, as rebels, patriots, terrorists, as the countries carved up into territories and some of the foreign troops have bases to where they're coming and going with their ships. And, you know, in my um, geopolitical discussions, I'm constantly talking about the 2020s and how they're preparing to be at a certain capacity by that point in time. And now you're hearing about the EMPs and the predictive programming. And, you know, it can come from this direction. It can come from Russia. It can come from North Korea. So when it actually happens and our defenses go down, the powers go down the grid and uh, some cities get attacked, you know, the list of suspects will be long from Iran to North Korea to Russia. Uh, but the brainwashing is also going on within our own country that it's all false flag. And it will always be false flag. And the only evil military that will ever walk the earth will only be the United States. In fact, China and Russia will be here to help. Attention, attention, attention. Foreign troops are here to help. Attention, attention, attention. And by studying history and also looking at the Russians, what they did to the German women... Uh, when they were gang rapes for weeks on end after they killed the men or imprisoned the men and during the time of the, the uh, Nuremberg trials. So you look at the United States and it and mirroring a direction of Nazi Germany, but actually being suicidal, like there's no way. I mean, seriously, China and Russia at some point are going to respond. And the way this is all being built up with a white woman did it or a, a, a blonde, blue-eyed, white woman that bears that look again very very close to my grandmother and I'm just sure there's going to be a bunch of childish comments that are going to pop up in the what the fuck is wrong with you Hillary Clinton is a human female the possibility that we are not alone in this universe is very real. And that she and many of the other guild actors masquerading as politicians, they're playing host to something. But painting the woman's face yellow, red, green, changing her eyes to slits, and all of a sudden she's a demon incarnate meme. She is the witch from the Wizard of Oz. And all of this stuff popping up in like the last few months. As of course the, the pictures people are sharing of Trump with the smug, narcissistic look. As those go viral in response, Hillary becomes the demon. The woman, the blonde American woman becomes the demon. And then we have Trump over here with the very smug... Very sinister, not not a friendly smile, but a very sinister, like the type of look you can imagine on someone if they were watching their enemy being tortured. But of course, Trump and Clinton are not enemies and the people that are supporting either are damaged and not worth even responding to, talking to, and I would warn against being too close to them because the stupidity could be contagious that you're seeing from those voting Trump and voting Clinton and even those voting Sanders for that matter. You can be someone that sees through the bullshit and is abstaining from giving any of them your energy. And you can abstain from, from being any title whatsoever. You don't have to be an anarchist. 
You can actually vote in local elections. That's right. You don't even have to go all the way and burn your voter registration card. You can actually vote for people on the local level that you think would actually be genuine supporters of the people. And in some areas, they need the right people in office to push back from what the state is doing. If you're, if you're not going to go in the common law direction and you're going to operate within the system, having people on the local level tell the feds and the those at the state level, hey, what you're doing is unconstitutional. What you're doing is wrong. And I am in office to tell you that. And I think that that is really needed. From major cities like Portland, Oregon, telling the feds to back off with their joint terrorism task force, to, you know, situations like Costilla County. You know, if Costilla County had an actual truly constitutional candidate in office, not running for office, but actually in office, there would be certain things that they would be able to push back from the feds, from the state, from, from others in the county. You have an issue like people being kicked illegally off their land. How many Trump supporters came to our aid in Costilla County? Of course, the media made Burns, Oregon the story a month later, which only affected a couple. But what do you have? What about a whole county that affects hundreds? Hundreds that don't have cattle. Hundreds that don't have anything at all. Not a ranch. All they have is their land. and They're being kicked off their land because they don't have a $30,000 septic. So when you have racism and classism together, and that's what you had in Costilla County, you have all these uh, white people up in arms that are uh, pro-Trump. They're concerned about uh, immigrants. Okay, let's see how real you are in your passion for the people. Here you have a situation where I single-handedly as a mixed-race human white genocide in action right being the combination of my genetics oh so subhuman and i am only the only one that covers the white people being kicked off their land by the racist hispanics in san luis colorado in late 2015 and what did we get we got people suspected feds rolling into costilla county trying to start a militia out of nothing Trump supporters on top of it, who later showed up in Burns, Oregon, also talking about the grand jury. And of course, we are talking about Bruce Doucette, a fake judge. And there were more people that were like trolling my channel at the time, like, are you guys actual real people or coming out of some sort of uh, InfoWars command central at the Pentagon or some army base? And I saw it with Burns, Oregon, as all my videos were demonetized, I called that thing out as the PSYOPs. A honey trap to attract the worst of the worst, as Kessler referred to them on the Alan Combs show, the people he was targeting when he was acting like he was, um, you know, a, a supporter of the Second Amendment. And Mark Kessler was shooting his firearm out in the middle of the woods. That was all there to attract the extremist element. And that's what I see Burns, Oregon doing as well, including the Trump campaign. There are people that can see through the race baiting. Whether or not Trump is a racist, the guy is an actor. And I have friends that are looking at this as a situation where you have an actor who can't even be taken seriously. Even as, as frightening as some of the things are, and you know, marginalizing Mexicans as rapists and Muslims as primarily being interested in wanting to hurt Americans and promote a violent version of Sharia law. And the list goes on and on and on. You have to be at a certain level of low consciousness to be okay with large numbers of people being marginalized as a certain way. There, there's something necessary in the brain, in the spirit, to even stoop to that level. There's got to be like a massive breach of intuition as they bring out the counterfeit demon, Hillary Clinton. The female white devil. And again, watch this narrative. The female white devil. Watch it build. Watch, watch white women in the United States get behind the white female blonde devil meme. 
the blonde devil meme. At the same time that white people are getting defensive and worried about immigrants, they make a white woman the devil. The devil to the world. And they say that a white woman, a white blonde woman, single-handedly because she's a demon, Forget the New World Order behind her. Forget the names of some of those New World Order individuals. Just, just keep it at Soros and Rothschild and Rockefeller. And, and, and repeat the same names that people have been repeating for 10 years. Don't, don't upgrade it. And don't ever talk about the Trump-Clinton ties. Don't ever show those dozens of pictures together. Just, just say a blonde, demonic, white Clinton bitch did it. And her husband's a racist. Excuse me, rapist. <coughs> So many people going, oh my God, wow, all this, uh, you know, rape hysteria is rape hysteria, and it actually is. And then you bring up Bill Clinton, it's like, rape, 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 rape. And then, of course, there are stories about Trump. Oh no, those women are lying. Those women are just straight up lying. And I'm not here to defend anyone. I'm here to point out the very carefully crafted divide and conquer between two groups. And how its real purpose isn't really to help one candidate and hurt the other candidate. The candidates are working together to turn Americans against each other. Are you are you with me still? Hello, McFly. Hello, McFly. The candidates are working together to push forward this narrative. So this blonde, blue-eyed, white woman narrative, Hillary Clinton bearing the genetics, in my opinion, blue blood she may be, but there's also a lot of you that have some some traces of blue bloods. See, when I actually look at society, at physicality, I see a lot of people that bear strong uh, genetic uh, a kinship to not only the Clintons, but the Bushes. Even if we know them to be blue bloods, there's certain looks, Anglo-Saxon looks, that they have. My grandfather, the husband of my grandmother, the grandmother that has a, a, a certain... Um, likeness to Hillary, the grandfather, damn, I could see him being related to the Bushes. <laughs> I mean, e even the Bush look, e I mean, people can go, oh, that's inbred, that's a fucking satanic bloodline, blah, 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 and you can actually be someone that re researches that stuff, but isn't actually, like, batshit crazy, but sees how a lot of human beings have certain genetic dispositions that can be activated. And I, I see that in a lot of people. I see that in a lot of Americans. It's like the propaganda, this, this hatred, this fear as Muslims is activating their reptilian genetics. Instead of actually seeing that the candidates are working together to help bring down this country and other things, they're in this manufacturer divide and conquer fantasy football realm, like fucking like a reptilian going hissing and hissing and going rape Hillary in prison. Donald Trump for president. Nobody but Donald. I mean, this is all mind control. This is, this is the hallmark of a society going in a very dangerous direction. And as, as they convince white people to scream at the top of their lungs, a white woman did it. This white woman, Hillary Clinton, the white woman. Soon the world will follow as well. And if you think there's going to be mass intervention when our country is under siege, when women are being sold and being gang raped by foreign troops and being sold in the black market. And I think some of our strip just going to disappear because they had this whole, you know, Elon Musk, SpaceX, NASA, China, Russia, trip to moon, trip to Mars, off-world bases, taking millions off planet, one-way trip off planet, starting in the 2020s, leading to the 2030s. Well, we're, we're looking at World War III then. And there's enough predictive programming we could see v, v the miniseries as a warning, really. I mean, that really is a warning. V the miniseries. And nobody can link down below in the comment section to the new remade one. And why is that? Because you can't find it. I mean the full thing. The full miniseries of the remake. And why did not... Why did they not continue that series on TV? Because it was a warning. You know, these, these aliens or entities bring us free health care to take us off planet. Well, in the real world, do they actually have to come as aliens? Here we have Elon Musk and others. They are literally, if you look at that news as well, 
predicting in a few years that they're going to have the capacity with their rockets that are made with hundreds of, of millions of dollars to billions of dollars. All this mystery money, elite money, mystery elite money to the tunes of billions of trillions on all these uh, secret space projects. It's, there's no doubt that there are spaceships, for those of you saying that there's no way they can get to Mars. How you are discounting the possibility that they have a plan to take people to bases so that they do have a plan to take people off planet. The question is, where are they going to go? Okay, you don't have to be a genius to understand how rational my concern is. That during a time of war, during a time of chaos, during a time where the grid is down and all pandemonium is taking place, and these wars, of course, being engineered by the Archons themselves, they have something else going on to where they're telling people they have the infrastructure through the private companies that have not collapsed, that have not been dismantled, that they are taking people off planet to the Mars base or the moon base to then go to Mars. And they can end up leaving and never coming back. And people never hearing from them again, even if a hologram is sent back. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. It's so wonderful here on Mars, when in reality, they may no longer even be alive. In reality, that could even be a clone, if not a hologram. They are pushing the narrative of a white woman doing it. And they're doing it at a time where they've divided the man and woman. Where they have encouraged the white woman to turn to so much evil. And to have, honestly, no feelings or remorse for the victims of war in the Middle East. And it has been the, the ongoing nightmare of my life being a, a red-blooded male who would love to be in love with a woman that has real feelings, that's within a few years of my own age, that's, you know, vibing to what I've never found it, never seen it. What kind of planet is this? Nearly all of you are male. There is something like very dark that is taking place throughout the entirety of my lifetime. Uh, but it didn't start with that, but I saw how within my lifetime, things went from somewhat normal to getting really, really weird in a, a society of so many people being caught up in some of these uh, movements when it was popular to be a part of that movement. But to honestly not have a movement showing remorse for the millions of dead Afghanis, for example. But every now and then it's popular to do a protest about Syria. Or popular to do a, a protest saying free Tibet or, or free Palestine. And that's not the same when you're doing it because the cameras are there. And there's a hundred people saying that, that it's good, Sally, and it's good, Jennifer, and it's good, Sarah, that you're down there with a group. What about just one to three of you and combating that social peer pressure matrix to only do things in a group, to not stand out. Where is that taking place? Where are those remembering the fallen Afghans? Where are the women? Where are the women? Where are the women in the Western world and even Afghan women that are spending their lives using their access to the internet? Not just to post selfies, but to post awareness of what's going on. It would have to take someone that is capable of, of advanced insight to be able to hold back this archonic mind control that the, arc, that, the, uh, that the Afghans are subhuman, that Arabs are subhuman. There are many people that are saying that the archons are Arabs, that the Arabs are archons because they heard it from John Lash. This is seriously psychotic. For people to take us back to the period of World War II and Nazi Germany and eugenics in Europe. This is fucked up. For them to take a, you know, a, something like the Archons or Demons or the Supernatural and connect it with Arabs, Persians, Semites. But it is happening. You know, and the reason why they're, they're encouraging so much evil and genocide... It's because the way energy works, whatever you put out comes back. Okay, so even a country itself can an, embark on certain actions that remove that hand of protection forever. 
And so on so many different levels, we can see how they propagandized the average American woman, average American man to participate in actions and thoughts that remove the hand of protection. Now, as we see histories of invasions, histories of battles, women are at the front lines of all the pain. We look at the Middle East and we look at the American female silence towards the gang rape of Afghani females. We look at the Afghani female silence who's now in America. We look at my relatives on my father's side of the family and we see how apathetic they are as they are memorized by the Dancing with the Stars, as they are memorized by the Facebook selfie, as they are memorized by all these narcissistic things. They themselves are not showing compassion for other Afghan females that are actually suffering at the hands of this occupation and those that are in reality from the West funding the Taliban and other radical groups. They've, they've been able to maintain the blinders in their Stockholm Syndrome, having sympathy for their captors. And I'm using this example to help you see other examples in your own life, in your own mind, in that of your family, in that of those that you're bedding down with. You must be able to see this programming for what it is. If you are to protect yourself from being infected by it. The vast majority of you and the world have been affected by the propaganda that the Afghans are subhumans because if you were not, you would be saying something. If you were not, you would be saying something. If you were not affected by the illusions of separation argument that you're not being affected by their rape and murder, then you would be saying something. And the illusions of separation doesn't necessarily have to be a false notion of racial superiority. The illusions of separation with regards between you and the Afghan people could be something as simple as, I don't live there, they don't live here, but in fact there are Afghans that live here and you're actually listening to someone who's half Afghan, born in, Oregon, by the way. But you're saying that's over there and this is over here. And even though we have troops from our country going over there and doing all of these horrific things, it's not going to affect us over here. And the fact is, it is affecting this country and the hand of protection. Every war, every bomb, every troop that's dispatched as they come back to this country, if they're lucky to make it back alive with their limbs and their lives to bring back demons and other spiritual entities from Babylon, the land that's been awoken, if you will, the sleeping dragon, the sleeping giant, the sleeping entity. Oh, yes. As they bomb it back to the Stone Age. As the people fuck to the sound of bombs dropping. As the people literally bring babies into this world to the sounds of bombs dropping over the babies of other lands. This isn't hell. Oh no, this is heaven. Oh yes. Heaven is a place on earth. That's exactly what this is. Oh no, those Afghan people, it's their karma. I'm telling you, I'm going to wrap things up now. They have done all this to entrap the souls. And for some reason, they're really going after a certain genetics within white people that they think are, uh, and I'm speculating, but it's like they're, they're attacking and attacking and attacking the consciousness of a certain demographic on this planet while they bomb back to Stone Age, another aspect of the population. Instead of just blame those people and say it's their karma that did it, you should actually want to stand against the machine that's actually removing them off the planet and not just act like you've got nothing to do with this. If you're voting in this election for even Sanders, who's for drones being used in the Middle East, these aren't truthers. These aren't people that are questioning these official stories regarding terrorism in our country. If you're voting for any of these individuals, you're giving the system your energy. You're co-signing it. You're supporting it. You're energetically courting with the system. You're courting yourself to the system. And you're letting the system cord to you. And there's dangers in that. They, where they do it now, or in a few years, because they can bring Trump in for a few years and then bring in Clinton. They make it look like a white woman did it. 
and they they breach the defenses of our country. This whole hate of Hillary Clinton could actually be used by the future. New World Order, American headhunting armies of death, amongst other things, as to why they're doing what they're doing. Again, years and years and years and years of suppression. But America's not alone in dishing out the suppression of the third world. But they're going to make it look like that. It's just America. Forget about Israel. Forget about all these other places. Oh, no. It's just the United States. And because people literally think this way, a woman did it. A guy did it. A black guy did it. Look at those fucking Arabs. Look at those fucking toads. Some people say, drone them back to the Stone Age. Drone them all. That's what they've prepped people for. Just blame certain, like, white woman, black man, Afghan man, Afghan man, rape woman, three-year-old girl, all these Afghans rape little girls. You know, like rinse.com. That's all you see. Just complete demonization of a genetic code that goes back thousands of years. There's something sick and dark behind this demonization of Earth-based bloodlines that's coming from somewhere else. So all this... False Islamic invasion stuff, in conclusion, is there to cause adrenal fatigue in you. So you don't look at the actual Russian-Chinese invasion that's actually coming, that's coming from the dark side, and the new New World Order that's coming, and the white slavery that's coming. No, 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 they want you to call people like me crazy because of what we're warning you about. And I will ask that you help others see this truth. They demonize certain groups, and then they go after those groups like hyenas, using human beings. The archons, dark spiritual parasites, demons, using politicians, using media, using technology to convince humans to go on these headhunting, gang-raping sprees to hurt other humans. They, there's something that they're planning, a world of chaos during this third world war scenario and the aftermath. And, and I believe... Part of the off-world agenda is to get a certain amount of genetic information, genetic tissue, uh, for cloning and, and other purposes. Potentially a hybrid breeding program. And so there's a certain amount of uh, genetics that they need, they believe in their eyes, from certain white women. Certain white women that can be traced and tracked with their cell phone, even if their cell phone goes down. Okay. With all this propaganda building and building and building and building that the blonde white woman did it. And I think that some women that should know better that are voting for Trump are, are doing so out of a, a primitive fear of this. And then some of them are just so gone intuitively. A lot of women are believed to be intuitive and I think that's more in our past. Whatever's going on with technology now seems to have created a firewall between them and, and actual source. That's why you see so much fake channeling going on with women today and not actually like predicting 9-11 or predicting what's going to be happening with the next world war and it all actually all going to these fake directions and the, the bankers being arrested and, and, and literally all of it garbly goo. And it's actually worse. The, the intuitive act, ac, accurate ratio is so far worse. I look at uh, um, Carrie Cassidy from uh, um, her media outlet. And I, 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 it's almost becomes painful and hurtful to see so many people, Project Camelot, acting like they're tapping into spirit and spewing out the most insane garbly goo that in no way is relevant to what's happening now, but only seem to be relevant for a half hour to hour when they were doing their disinfo report of several, several years ago. And then you look at Carrie Cassidy now and you look at her physically, she's physically falling apart. She looks like she's falling apart. Like, like you know, like that. you see that picture of Dick Cheney and he's scratching on his face and there's the green reptilian underneath. And I'm not saying she's a reptilian, but I am saying that I think a lot of our genetics here in the United States today, um, there's a certain amount of genetics that are genetics that are easily controlled and programmed. That's why you see so much distortion in the alternative media and in the New Age movement because there's a certain amount of people that bear a certain genetic line that are involved in supposedly truth-telling that are very easily controlled, hijacked, 
dream hijacks. Oh, no, this is the Messiah for you. Oh, Donald Trump. And you look at him and you look at him again. And there's like there's something in this transmitting, receiving human being that instead of actually is is transmitting a truth, they're receiving a script and they're repeating and retransmitting that script to others that are receiving the script and not outputting truth, but receiving a lie. And one could say you're either speaking the truth or receiving a lie. And I, I, I just said that myself for the first time because that's what I'm seeing in my mind's eye. So I'm going to wrap this up. They want you to think a white woman did it. In reality, it'll be the new world order. Alex Hansen, sign off November 3rd, 2016.